so this is the see pressure i am taking mm of mercury column and temperature in degree centigrade so that is the this is the way the plot looks so i normally what i do as i told you i increase the uh, pressure slowly from a low pressure i increase the pressure slowly and for each i will know what will be the temperature at which the ignition occurs and so on so that that will result in this curve it's called uh, say uh, say in inverted s curve or z curve something like that so in this we how to analyze this curve we will uh, go through this uh, plot slowly so this temperature and pressure corresponds to initial charging condition as i told you uh, this will be the uh, pressure uh, of charge okay the temperature is the at the charging condition what is the temperature of the chamber that is this so with that temperature whether there will be a ignition or not that is going to be ascertained okay now explosion limits are explained by considering the temperature and pressure dependencies of the elementary reaction so now as i told you is completely kinetically controlled there is no big flow or concentration gradient etc inside so no diffusion no transport processes okay the only thing which is going to control this is chemical kinetics so we need to understand the explosion limits by considering temperature and pressure dependencies of the elementary reactions in the chemical kinetic mechanism so if you should have some knowledge of the chemical kinetic mechanism to understand why this happens or there is no way to explain this okay so that is what the the important concept we should understand here so how to go about analyzing it see the vertical blue line what i have drawn that is corresponding to a temperature of 500 degrees centigrade so if you see this 500 degrees centigrade uh, when i say explosion when the temperature is in between so this point and this point the vertical line i have drawn two lines here when the pressure is in between these two points for the given same temperature of 500 degrees explosion occurs however when the pressure is increased beyond this point until this point no explosion occurs for the same temperature so that is the uh, behavior here do you understand so what happens is when the pressure for the given temperature 500 degrees okay of the chamber if the pressure of the reactants uh when the, when the fill pressure is less than this point okay so very low pressures then no ignition takes place okay now i go to this point to this point okay so this point i go to this point okay now what happens for the same temperature explosion occurs that is ignition and the pressure rise is seen so the magnitude of pressure rise is uh, can be varying that that is possible but there is a short pressure rise when compared to the fill pressure next after this when you increase the pressure further at the same temperature there is no ignition so you can see that there is something which we can't explain unless we go through the chemical kinetic mechanism that is the important uh, concept here so how will you explain this otherwise with only the properties like pressure temperature we cannot explain this okay because the stoichiometric mixture free is free is constant the stoichiometric mixture so phi equal to 1 that is not varying in this temperature is also constant so temperature is fixed in the vertical line 500 degrees centigrade then pressure i know so uh, why the one uh, the pressure is in this range why ignition should occur and it is in this range why it should not occur it cannot be explained unless we, we seek the help of the elementary reactions and uh, their pressure and temperature dependencies okay so as i told you from the lowest pressure of 1 mm mercury up to a yeah, small pressure rise uh, 1.5 mm mercury no explosion occurs this is the region here small region here there is no explosion which is going to occur okay uh, how will explain this at very low pressure like this 1 mm to 1.5 mm mercury free radicals are produced by the reaction so h2 and o2 are the real uh, the reactants it produces h and it also produces the meta stable species ho2 i say this is the meta stable species because it is going to uh, be stable under only certain conditions so so we call it meta stable species why i will explain here so uh, the initiation reaction produces radicals okay then the chain sequence again produces branching so more radicals are produced and uh, again you can see that one uh, major species and radicals propagation reaction so uh, the initiation then you have a branching propagation reaction this produces uh, radicals 
free radicals. However, when the pressures are very low, the concentrations are very low. So, what happens is the probability of the radicals produced destroyed near the walls of the vessels is actually higher. Okay. So, what happens the radicals are lost. So, that is no ignition. Radicals are produced, but they, they are lost. The concentration of the reactants also is very low. So, that is the reason why there is no explosion occurring at the very low pressure value in the up to 1.5 mm mercury. There is no this. Okay. Now, what happened? The first limit, when I put first limit horizontal line here, when the pressure increases beyond 1.5 mm mercury, mixture ignites and explodes. Okay. So, why? Okay, now, what happens is very really simple. The at sufficient value of pressure, that is this value to the second limit, what I have drawn here, chain sequence reaction dominate over the destruction. So, that is what I told that, that the concentration of the mixture is higher, more radicals are produced. So, the number of radicals which are sustained and uh, when compared to what are lost in the walls, okay, they are higher. So, the reaction sustains. That is ignition occurs and uh, we get the limit. Now, so in this range, it uh, it continues when the pressure is increased to about 50 mm. So this is the 50 mm log scale. So 50 mm mercury, when it increases to 50 mm mercury column, then this continues. That means you always see what will be the pressure in this range. Uh, okay, starting from 1.5, uh, slightly more than 1.5 mm mercury to 50 mm mercury column you see explosion occurring that is the ignition and the rap rapid pressure rise occurring. Okay, now, after this point further increasing the pressure you go to this no explosion mode. Why? When pressure is more than 50 mm mercury column okay, then mixture becomes non explosive. So, the reason is competition of H atoms. So, again please understand you have to see Kel from the kinetics. So, now, it is a very simple system H2 plus half O2 giving H2O that is the mechanism here overall mechanism, but it has several reactions. So, 18 to 20 reactions are required to explain this uh, process so, that is the uh, uh, importance of a kinetically controlled regime. When the, the nothing else controls the combustion phenomena only kinetics control we need to go and seek the help of the reaction mechanism with elementary reactions several elementary reactions to understand the process. Okay, now, when pressure is more than 50 mm mercury column, then what happens is the mixture becomes non explosive due to competition of H atom between two reactions, uh, chain branching reaction H plus O2 giving O plus OH. So, here you can see that H is required for this reaction to occur and produce more and more radicals. Okay, then this is a very branching reaction, that means it is very, very rapid and a low temperature chain reaction which is terminating in nature H plus O2 again H is required for this plus a third body like combustor walls giving this species HO2 and M. Now, please understand that okay, now what is the problem either one, this, this occurs HO2 is produced then HO2 can be used to produce some radicals no, so as, as we see here, uh, here HO2 also uh, can produce radicals. Now, we can there are reactions which can produce HO2 basically. So, here you can see HO2 is produced. So, that is sustained here in this range of uh, pressure. So, like that if HO2 is produced that can also sustain no, but why it is not helping the explosion or ignition is HO2 being a metastable becomes non reactive in this pressure range. Okay? That is the reason. So, metastability in this pressure range HO2 is stable and reactive here non reactive H O 2 is non reactive. So, that is the main reason. So, H is if H is used to only produce O and O H the reaction might have continued, but uh, since there is a competition between H 2 uh, produce uh, H O 2 also and H O 2 which is produced it is not helping the reaction to go through the mixture is non explosive in this range from this to third limit. So, this is the limit. So, 
that is the reason. So, we need to understand the HO2's uh, contribution here. Uh, so, basically uh, HO2 if it is fully stable then it would have reacted. So, we will get only explosion in this uh, range also, but it is not so. So, under the special condition it is not going to be reactive. So, we get the non explosive nature of the mixture. Okay, now, the third limit is when the pressure is around 3000 milligram. Okay. Now, what happened? HO2 what is produced in large quantities, uh, which was not useful reaction, uh, produced this no explosion limit. But what happened when the pressure is increased after 3000 mm uh, uh, mercury? What happens is this HO2 will now react to form hydrogen peroxide H2O2 and this is called H2O2 sequence and also you can see the radicals produced here and uh, this sequence becomes uh, sustainable and so again we get the uh, explosive uh, tendency that means the, the mixture will become uh, ignite and uh, pressure will be seen. So, this is very important. So, the, the limits are explained with the help of uh, elementary reactions. Okay. Okay. Now, when you see here when the temperature is below 400 degrees approximately, okay, there is no explosion, irrespective of whatever be the pressure, no explosion takes place because the temperature is not enough. That is the minimum temperature is required to trigger the reaction that is not happening here. So, less than 400 degrees temperature, no explosion occurs irrespective of whatever be the uh, pressure. Similarly, when the temperature, see for example, this is the limit, so this is 580 degrees uh, centigrade when that is uh, temperature is more than that value then even the low pressure you will see the explosion very small quantity of hydrogen oxygen but flammable flammable quantity you can it will just ignite and uh, give the magnitude of pressure is maybe low when the initial pressure itself is low but uh, you can see that this temperature will uh, provide explosion at uh, almost all the pressures sufficient quantity uh, which is injected inside then it will surely increase the uh, pressure rapidly due to the occurrence of ignition, auto ignition. Okay, so this is very important. So as I told you, for this ignition, uh, which is only controlled by chemical kinetics, we need to only consult the uh, mechanism with elementary reactions to understand what is happening. Okay, now let us uh, quickly see about the exclusion limit of hydrocarbons like methane, ethane, propane, mainly the alkanes which are listed here. Uh, one interesting phenomena is, see for example. Uh, so, this is the curve for methane that means that explosion occurs only beyond the temperature is this. For example, I draw a line here, a vertical line here. For example, at this given temperature explosion occurs only in this region. So, uh, when the pressure is uh, higher than particular point. So, here no explosion occurs and here explosion occurs. Okay. So, no explosion and this in, the, in this explosion occurs. Okay. So, this basically uh, a simple curve for uh, methane. So, for E then you will see some uh, straight portion like this. So, where the regime is extended slightly, but when you when you go to higher order alkanes say propane and further higher order alkanes, we see a interesting phenomena when the temperature is in this range of say 300 to 400 degrees centigrade, we have a cool flame region. See for example, it should be like this. So, it, it, it should either go like this like methane or like ethane should go like this flat and go like this correct, but you can see a dip here that means some flashes of uh, uh, flames one or more reaction zones in the volume you can see one or more reaction zones which has a faint blue emission it is not a bright blue it is a faint blue emission that means some reaction has occurred in a very low temperature regime of uh, 300 to 400 degrees centigrade and that. Uh, will uh, cause some uh, some flame to propagate that is called cool flames. Okay, only for higher hydrocarbons this occurs. So some interesting behavior etc is uh, seen in this. So basically, why it happened? We have to seek the low temperature reaction. So why these cool flames are occurring? We have to seek what is called low temperature uh, elementary reactions. Okay. So, reactions are possible at very low temperatures in the range of the 300 400 Kelvin also reactions are possible the, the oxidation. So, actually you no know, this is actually used in uh, say some uh, engines in IC engines where if you can uh, uh, restrict the temperature rise okay, and if, if you can combust your uh, uh, fuel 
at a low temperature range then the production of emissions like uh, NOx can be reduced. So, that is a low, low temperature chemistry uh, or chemical kinetics is sought uh, to do such uh, uh, combustion phenomena in the IC engines. So, the cool flames are the ones which are formed with the very low temperatures, chamber temperatures we get this. Okay. So, this is about this. So, now we can see that there is such a phenomena so, till now what we have uh, seen is uh, volumetric phenomena. The entire volume will uh, have the reaction simultaneously occurring over that and also the uh, the properties will be uniform. Okay. It may vary with time, but it will be uniform. So, uh, spatial variation will not be much. Okay. Now, let us go to see what is called premix flame propagation. Now, we have seen premix, premix combustion where at every point combustion occurs in a premixed charge a reactant. Okay. But that is no isolated uh, region where the combustion is uh, going to occur. So, we are now going to introduce what is called flame. Okay. What is flame? So, let us see this. So, still now our focus what on smaller chambers okay, where volumetric reactions are possible homogeneous reactors. Now, what we are going to see is uh, when the reaction chamber is longer, long, we say long, long, long tube, something like that, or a larger pressure vessel, spherical pressure, okay, say some uh, 10 liters capacity, 15 liters capacity, etc., big vessels, then I cannot ignite all over the space. I will have a spark which is uh, given at, say, maybe in the spherical vessel, I will uh, give a spark at the center. In the long tube, I may ignite at one of the ends. Okay. Now, when I do a localized uh, ignition, that is a spark or something piloted ignition as I told you it is a piloted ignition external source. Okay. Then it will initiate the, the reaction only in a small region right. volume the end volume is very big. So, a small spark will initiate reaction only at this point. Then this reaction zone which is formed that will further uh, move out and consume or it may uh, spread and consume okay, the reactant which is present in the chamber. So, this localized reaction zone which is created by a small spark in a small region that is called flame localized. So, a candle flame. So, candle is the fuel which is available and air is available every, everywhere, but uh, only at a particular point it is burning. So, that is a flame. So, only a localized uh, uh, combustion zone is identifiable then that we call as a flame. And this flame subsequently propagates through the combustion chamber consuming the unburned reaction mixture present in this chamber. Okay. So, that is the flame propagation. So, so, the difference between the previous ones were actually we are talking about the homogeneous reactors premix combustion occurring all over the homogeneous reactors like this and uh, we talked about auto ignition where again homogeneous uh, combustion takes place within the chamber and uh, where only chemical kinetics is going to be very important. Okay. Now, what we are seeing is the uh, localized formation of a flame due to a small ignition source and uh, this flame propagating uh, along the chamber dimensions to consume the unburnt uh, reactant mixture. So, that is called premix flame formation. Here also kinetics is very important. Uh, so, now what are the factors which is going to affect that propagation of a flame depends on several parameters. So, fuel type, equivalence ratio, temperature of the unburnt mixture, pressure, then wall boundary conditions okay, and so on. So, these are the important parameters which is going to govern this. Okay. So, let us see some uh, cases. So, let us first con consider a long duct a tube open at either one end or both the ends. Okay, so, let us say it is closed at one end and open at one end I try to fill the reactants slowly and it is filled now uniformly uh, filled and it is thoroughly premixed reactant mixture which is inside that. Okay, sufficient amount of fuel and the oxidizer are there and uh, it is flammable. Uh, uh, the unburned temperature is fixed at a certain value. So, this is the condition. Now, I try to ignite this mixture at the open end. Okay. Then what happens? A combustion wave or a premix flame is initiated. 
Okay, so the flame is formed there. Localized, it is not from our wall over the tube, correct? Only at the end where you are igniting it, there a small localized flame will form. And what happens now? This flame will be formed and it will try to propagate. Okay, now how to ignite this? So the ignition, the initial piloted ignition, that is the ignition done by an external source, depends on the magnitude of the energy source. If I give a very weak spark, it may not ignite. That will be sufficiently stronger energy I should give to ignite it. Okay, so that is the uh, the energy content of the uh, spark or the piloted uh, ignition source should be sufficient enough. Similarly, the volume of the mixture which is ignited also should be sufficient. If very low uh, volume is present, then we cannot ignite. So the concentration of the reactor should be higher enough. So the volume of the reactor mixture also should be uh, sufficiently available. So, this is called minimum ignition energy that should be supplied. Similarly, critical volume of reactor mixture. These are the two criteria should be met to achieve the, uh, the pilot ignition. We will talk about this little bit later when you do the ignition uh, in the next uh, chapter basically. But uh, you have to keep in mind that the pilot ignition, uh, whenever you ignite with anything will not occur. It, there should be a minimum ignition energy for the ignition source plus the, there should be sufficient volume for the reactant to burn causing the ignition. So, the flame zone is now formed. Okay? So, that means that the flame zone is formed only consuming certain amount of uh, uh, reactants uh, and uh, for achieving that you need certain amount of ignition energy. So, once this ignition is uh, achieved and uh, a flame is formed at the open, near the open end. Okay? Now, we are igniting the open end. What happens? The flame steadily propagates at a subsonic speed, slow speed, okay? subsonic speed. When you compare to the, uh, the speed of sound, it is very, very low velocity or speed. So, it is going to propagate consuming the mixture. Okay? Now, as I told you, the temperature and the reaction composition are constant and uh, nothing is moving inside. Correct? Within the chamber, everything is stationary and a thoroughly mixed reactant is present. So, now what will control the propagation? The chemical kinetics. So, chemically, chemical kinetics controlled phenomena will occur. So, that is what the propagation is, flame propagation. Uh, when you ignite at the open end of the duct, you get a steady propagation at a slow speed. Okay? That is what is achieved and uh, that will consume the reactant and the flame will propagate normally at a very steady state. Okay? Now, certain parameters are going to affect it. As I told you, the wall boundary conditions, the dimension of the chamber, everything will surely the, the duct itself will uh, affect the rate at which it goes. So, that means you no, know, the rate of propagation is not constant when you fix a fuel and air, when you fix the fuel say methane and air and the composition say phi equal to 1. When you increase the duct uh, size or decrease the duct size and if you cool it or uh, make it adiabatic etc., you will see that the, the, the propagation rate will vary. So, that is it is it, uh, it's not just because of the fuel mixture. Uh, or its unburned temperature. It is because of the other conditions, lot of other parameters will affect the propagation rate. So, now the flame which steadily propagates at a subsonic speed, okay, that process is called deflagration. Deflagration. Okay. Now, what happened? Since you are igniting at the open end now, the products which are formed, hot products of combustion which are formed, that will leave through the uh, open end of the duct, it will just leave out. Okay. What happens? The flame propagates through, here this is the sketch, the flame, this is open end, so flame propagates through the tube like this, consuming the unburnt reactants and the burnt gas goes away from the open end out. So, it is a steady propagation, so uh, the speed at which it propagates is called SL. So, this process is called deflagration and the propagation speed is called laminar flame speed SL. When I say speed, here it is only one directional flow. So, it is not a velocity, it is a, a speed. The magnitude is what is important. So, that is SL called laminar flame speed SL. For most of the hydrocarbon air mixtures, this SL varies in between 40 to 60 centimeter per second. That will be the rate at which it, uh, uh, the, the, the speed at which it moves. Okay? But lot of variations when you try to 
do the experiment in different conditions, if you, even if you change the material of the tube, there will be difference in the SL value. So, that means the SL is not the characteristic of the reactant mixture or the unburned temperature and so on. It is, uh, it is going to be affected by several other characteristics. Okay? SL, so that is very important character when you, when you have a premixed flame propagation, the very important, first and important characteristic okay, is the laminar flame speed that we have to understand. But it is a characteristic, not a property. Okay. So now this laminar flame speed is the speed at which flame steadily consumes the reactant mixture. Okay. Normally we make it adiabatic, so we will we'll insulate this tube so that adiabatic uh, flame speed only we will try to get basically. So now with the reference, when the reference flame is attached to the flame itself, okay. Now I sit on the flame. I see that reactants are coming to, to the flame at the same speed of SL. So either, but actually what happens in the laboratory uh, frame of reference, I see a tube in which the flame is propagating, I can see that the flame is propagating as a function of uh, the distance, okay, it is propagating at a constant speed, almost constant speed SL. But if I sit on the flame, then I see the reactants are coming towards the flame at the same speed, normal to the uh, flame. Uh, okay, so reactant can come. So this, if this is stationary, then reactants move towards this when it is stationary. Okay, but that is the uh, frame of reference is shifted to the flame itself. Okay, so as I told you, several factors affect the flame propagation rate. Dimensions, as I told, dimension of duct. Okay, if it's very small, actually very very small dimension may not even allow the propagation. So there should be some sufficient diameter for the duct. Uh, similarly, if uh, the shape of the duct also can, like in, instead of the cross sectional shape, uh, instead of circle, it may be say square or rectangle, that will also affect the propagation rate. Then the law, loss of heat and radicals, as it, uh, we saw in the explosion limits, the radicals are lost in the walls, wall collisions. So, that may affect, okay. So, that means the type of wall, etc., also will play a role, okay. Then the boundary layer adjacent to the wall. That will also the viscous flow, no? viscous fluid is present. So as the flame moves, there will be bone layer uh, which is formed. No? That that may also affect the equivalence ratio, initial temperature, and pressure of the reactants. So these are the important uh, parameters which will govern or affect the uh, flame propagation, the rate of flame propagation. Now in the previous uh, thing, you can see that the flame instead of being straight like this, you can see that flame is slightly curved, correct? Curved. This is because of wall effects. Wall effects make the flame to be curved. Okay. Now, if the dimension of the duct is below a critical value, as I told you, know the dimension is very important. Just giving a, we are going to see this uh, uh, in detail later. When the dimension of the duct is below a critical value, okay, very very small diameter, you cannot take. What happens in that is when you have a small diameter, the volume of the reactants inside will be low. So, the heat release which is going to occur with this low volume of reactants will not be able to compensate for the heat loss so you, okay, uh, which is occurring. So, what happens? The flame will not propagate. The heat release due to combustion within this small volume of the duct cannot compensate for the heat loss through the walls. So, flame will not propagate. So, this is very important characteristic. This is actually used to uh, used for our benefit, like uh, we, we can arrest the flame propagation uh, inside some critical areas where the premix reactants are available. So, this is very important uh, thing. So, the dimensions are going to affect the flame propagation. Okay, now, we have seen deflagration that is the steady, almost steady propagation at a very low speed, a subsonic speed. Okay. Now, what happens? Now, I do the other way. I have the open end uh, and closed end. Okay. I now ignite at the close end. The if one end of the duct is closed and the mixture is ignited at the closed end. Okay, what happens now? Now ignite here, uh, flame is formed. Okay, and the flame consumes. This is unburnt. It's so unburnt, and in this region, burnt gases will be there. Okay, now the flame will propagate in this direction, okay, SL, and that will try to uh, go. 
consuming the unburnt reactant. However, in the previous case when this was open, the products were able to escape out of that. But what now what happens? The product cannot escape. So, some uh, type of uh, build up of products will happen, the products reach a higher temperature. So, what happens is they, they will try to accelerate the flame. It is not a piston effect, please understand. What happens is the, 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 the gases that are burnt gases are hot. So, they are going to expand and while they expand, what happens is the pressure builds up to accommodate that the flame is going to be pushed. Uh, so, it is going to be accelerated. So, this accelerates the flame under certain conditions. What happens is the velocity is initially it was SL, now that is subsonic laminar uh, thing that may become a yeah, supersonic, may also reach a supersonic velocities speeds. So, that supersonic flame propagation is referred to as detonation. Okay? So, closed end uh, ignition products cannot leave so that they are going to expand over uh, behind the uh, flame so that the flame is accelerated. Okay? When well, the flame is accelerated, uh, what happens is it may also reach a velocity which is uh, more than the sonic, so supersonic velocities and uh, this supersonic propagation is termed as detonation. We will not always see this, it is not easy to establish such a uh, this in all practical situations, it is not possible. So, just take a tube and close one end and ignite it, you will not see supersonic velocities. Maybe there will be a transient propagation where uh, you can see the increase in SL values etcetera, but uh, reaching supersonic condition is not easy to achieve. So, some unique applications like pulse detonation engines, we can see that. So, some uh, it is a special type of engine where uh, uh, some pulses of uh, flu fuels will be uh, fed and uh, it uh, burns. Uh, the, the pulse will be a huge quantity, huge quantity of uh, fuel will be fed into this and that will uh, uh, accelerate and uh, burn faster and so on. So, a uh, lot of research uh, been done in this, but uh, there is a pretty unique application, special applications. So, where we can see detonations, so but uh, normally it is not possible to really achieve that in lab scale. Now, some small uh, characteristics of this you will see through some quantitative uh, values okay, or qualitative differences between these two. Okay. So, let us say the unburnt gas when I, when I fix the flame at a particular location, uh, it will see unburnt gas approaching it from one side and the burnt gas leaving from the other side. So, actually burnt gas uh, is formed in this basically. So, for deflagration what happens, the burn gas actually moves away from the open end. For the uh, detonation, uh, okay, the burn gas is not able to move away from the other side that we have to keep in mind. Okay. So, what happens? In the, there are these quantities we will try to do. So, here C1 is the sonic speed, that is the velocity of sound. So, now U1 is the, any uh, quantity what I am putting here when I say suffix is 1, then I refer to this unburnt state and when I suffix is 2, that is referred as burnt state. So, when I say u1 by c1, that is the Mach number, Mach number at state 1, that should be, so approaching velocity. So, flame is moving at the subsonic velocity, the approaching velocity when the flame is uh, uh, stationary or I sit on the flame, I see the unburnt mixture coming to me with the subsonic velocity. So, for deflagration, you will see that the u1 by c1 back number is very, very low 0 0.0001 to 0 0.03. For detonation, since the flame itself can move with supersonic velocity, when you sit on the flame, you will see the unburnt reactant mixture approaching you at a Mach numbers, a very high Mach numbers. Actually, this is very, uh, it is not easy to achieve this basically. So, is a normal shock, you know, normally it can propagate at such uh, such Mach numbers. Uh, when there is a detonation wave which is propagating, there will be normal shock also will be associated with that, it is highly irreversible. So, that 5 to 10 is the range of, so that what I am trying to put here is as a qualitative assessment, much much larger Mach numbers are seen in the detonation. Similarly, what is the ratio of the velocity at the station 2 
by section 1 for deflagration that is the hot gas are going to move away from the uh, flame uh, out of the duct to the open end they accelerate because of the uh, uh, higher temperature higher pressure etc they will accelerate so the ratio u2 by u1 u1 is actually very very low so u2 we can see the mach number here u2 by u1 is 4 to 6 acceleration will take place but here deceleration takes place because when compared to the incoming uh, approaching unburnt uh, uh, detonation velocity this will be very very low okay now p2 by p1 it is almost constant, when you say slight expansion, it is almost constant, there is no pressure rise at all. But here a strong compression takes place 13 to 55, okay. So, very, uh, in, uh, very sharp rise in the pressure. Similar temperature, some heat addition happened both, so there is an increase in temperature 4 to 16 here, here 8 to 21, but much uh, larger, at least 2 times larger than the uh, detonation. Density rho 2 by rho 1 is 0 0.0625, here it is 1.7 to 2.6. There is some qualitative uh, comparison between a detonation and this. But please understand this is for a particular condition. So, basically this deflagration is measured for CH4 R phi equal to 1. So, these are the typical quantity quantities for this particular uh, case. But uh, this some calculation based on normal shock propagation and other uh, with the heat addition and so on.